I'm Nude. I'm with Code Pink, the anti-war organization. And I just have a question. Why is the right to self-defense only given to oppressors? The U.S. has armed and enabled Israel to commit genocide for over half a year. And for years before that, they funded Israel's military, whose history is characterized by ethnic cleansing and violence that extends well beyond Palestine, including targeted attacks on Iran. So why is Israel, a, a country that the U.S. swears is a sovereign nation with the right to self-defense, being treated like a baby that you can't say no to? Is this what the U.S. government thinks is strategic? An ally that commits genocide and attacks on sovereign nations with impunity? Let's not be mistaken, it's exactly because the U.S. funds and enables Israel that it continues to destroy the world with violence. It's because the U.S. allowed Israel to feel empowered to attack Iran's embassy in Syria that Iran was pushed to respond. The U.S. must recognize that this violence will continue to escalate into a world war as long as they continue to give the green light to Israel's genocide campaign in Gaza and continue to send weapons to Israel's military. That is the root of all this. So we can't allow them to distract us with all this discourse around Iran to distract from the real root of this problem, which is Israel's genocide campaign in Gaza. We can't allow them to ignore the truth that is right in front of their faces. And it's that this genocide in Gaza is clearly wrong and unjustified and not strategic. Unless Israel's goal is to rid Palestine of all Palestinians, which we know it is. And it's ridiculous that I have to even say that. But Biden and the entire U.S. government need to realize that supporting Israel in this genocide has consequences that will affect the entire globe. Israel's violence has already affected this country, actually, as the police right here in Chicago also feel empowered to beat our youth and elders and jail them like they did just a few days ago and surround us when we're literally just standing here, right? Yay! I want to be clear that it doesn't take direct U.S. attacks to drag us into an all-out regional war. They're comfortable enough funding Israel to carry out their attacks for them, like they have done for years. Their job is to disseminate the narrative that justifies Israel's U.S.-backed violence. And we see evidence of this in the outpour of statements that came out by U.S. officials condemning Iran's attack. The same officials who have been completely silent of the over 35,000 Palestinian martyrs at the hands of Israel. Because it's Palestinian Prisoners Day, I can't stand up here and talk, uh, not mention our, pa our political prisoners. Um, I returned to Palestine uh, recently before uh, everything broke out in October. And I had a chance to talk to a lot of political prisoners, you know, as you can imagine. A lot of people in Palestine have been to prison. Um, and there's somebody who I talked to particularly who was in administrative detention. If anybody here doesn't know what that is, Administrative detention is when you are imprisoned without a charge. You don't know the charges. Your family doesn't know. Your lawyer doesn't know. Because, I mean, newsflash, there's no charge. You're Palestinian. So congrats, now you're detained, right? And not only is this a huge obstacle for Palestinians, you know, trying to get out of prison, right? But you're also being held for an indefinite amount of time. So Palestinians are often in solitary confinement for six months. By the way, they don't even know how much time has passed. Six months, when the six months is over, they're like, okay, you're actually gonna stay for another six months. After that six months, they stay for another six months. Can you imagine that psychological torture? Being in prison for just six months at a time, not even knowing if you will actually get out of prison. A lot of people here might have had the experience of being in jail for a few hours after an action, and I'm sure you would say that that experience was pretty horrible, right? Imagine that for just years on end, not knowing when you're going to get out, not knowing why you're in there, and not knowing if you're ever going to have justice, right? You know, not knowing if you're going to be one of the Palestinians who is killed in Israeli prison. This is just one way the genocidal state of Israel terrorizes Palestinians. But I want to bring us back to the bottom line here, right? And the bottom line is that there is absolutely no benefit and supporting genocide by a settler colonial state. And that's why we're here, right? Calling for an end to Israel's genocide campaign, demanding the U.S. stop arming Israel, demanding freedom for all our political prisoners from the U.S. to Palestine, and of course saying no to war with Iran. 
So thank you all for being here to show them that we are against the Western imperialism and Zionism that has plagued the Swana region for generations. Thank you.